Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is the beauty of education in Pakistan. And we are going to discuss case study. A worker complains of difficulty in gripping his tools tightly and they repeatedly fall from his hand. It means patient has weakness in his hand. On examination, the physiotherapist notices that worker is able to grip the tool tightly with his wrist in extension, but unable to do so effectively with the wrist in flexion. What is the most probable cause of his uh, issue? Option A. The passive insufficiency of both flexor digitorum profundus and extensor digitorum. Option B. Passive insufficiency of flexor digitorum and active insufficiency of extensor digitorum. Option C. The active insufficiency of flexor digitorum profundus and the passive insufficiency of flexor digitorum extensor digitorum. Option D. The active insufficiency of both flexor digitorum profundus and extensor digitorum. It's very important concept when we're talking about biomechanics and covering the all basics in musculoskeletal examination. Here, the most important thing to consider the passive insufficiency and active insufficiency. This is important concept in terms of question, in terms of examinations, and sometimes in terms of interventions also. Let's look at the definition of active and passive insufficiency. There are few things that you should always remember. In particular, the concept usually uh, is that the passive insufficiency and active insufficiency, we use this term only when it comes to two joint muscles. The both term passive insufficiency and active insufficiency uh, would, will be considered in terms of two joint muscles. You know why? How they have the joint muscles and the two joint muscles, for example, the wrist extensors, the common extensors originate from the forearm and it helps with extension at wrist and extension at fingers. We are talking about the extensors. In the same way, the common flexors of the wrist originate from the medial epicondyle help the patient to perform wrist flexion and finger flexion also. Alright, think about more two joint muscles. For example, gastrocinemus is a plantar flexor. Also, it helps in knee flexion. It's known as the two, two joint muscles. The quadriceps with its two joint muscles which helps in knee extension and hip flexion. Think about hamstring muscles which is also known as two joint muscles which helps in knee flexion and hip extension. Again, the tricep muscles which help at shoulder and at the elbow. At shoulder, it helps in shoulder flexion and in the same way, at the elbow, it helps in elbow flexion and supination. So when we're talking about the active and passive insufficiency, it's only applicable for the two joint muscles. By definition, active insufficiency means inability to contract muscles at both joints. It means muscles are unable to contract simultaneously at the same time it both joint which means if i'm trying to flex my wrist and if i try to flex my fingers i am unable to make a good grip because of the active insufficiency of the flexors of the wrist and the flexors of 
fingers. Same way, the passive insufficiency means inability to stretch the muscles at both joints simultaneously at the same time. For example, when you trying to perform the flexion, you basically doing activity and you are flexing the both muscles at both joints. But when you try to do extension and try to open the fingers, the same muscle, the wrist flexors are being stretched at the both joint at the finger at the wrist now the range of motion will be limited due to passive insufficiency if i try to flex my fingers and then extend my wrist i will have more range of motion then i extend my fingers so again active insufficiency muscles Uh, when it comes to contract it two joints simultaneously and the passive insufficiency the muscle insufficient to stretch simultaneously at the both joint keyword here is contracting and stretching contracting we use when it comes to active insufficiency and stretching when uh, extension uh, when it comes to passive insufficiency at the two joints simultaneously. That's how the concept of active and passive insufficiency works. Now back to question again. A worker complains of difficulty in gripping his tools tightly. It means the patient uh, and they repeatedly fall from the hand. The patient has a uh, wrist flexor weakness. On examination, the patient notices that the worker is able to grip tools tightly with his wrist and extension, but unable to do it effectively with the wrist and flexion. The most probable cause of the issue. Option A, passive insufficiency of the both flexors, digitorum profundus and extensor digitorum. Option B, passive insufficiency of flexor digitorum and active insufficiency of extensor digitorum. Option C, the active insufficiency of flexor digitorum profundus and the passive insufficiency of extensor digitorum. Option D, the active insufficiency of both flexor digitorum profundus and extensor digitorum. Active insufficiency of muscle occurs when the agonous muscle incapable of shortening to extend required simultaneously produce full range of motion all the joint crosses. Passive insufficiency when uh, muscles cannot lengthen the extent required for full range of motion in the both direction. The grip strength decreases in wrist flexion because of active insufficiency of fingers and passive insufficiency of the finger extensors. So, what should be the right key for this? Option 3. Is the right answer in this case active insufficiency of flexor digitorum it means the weakness of flexor muscles and passive insufficiency of extensor digitorum simultaneously option c is the correct answer for this question thank you so much